It's been said numerous times before, but a highly anticipated rematch between Notre Dame and UConn meeting number 49. The last time they met in the Final Four last year. We know what happens when these two teams square up. When UConn and Notre Dame play, it's one of the biggest rivalries in women's college basketball. Still a chance for the Huskies! She did it! The toughest matchup of the year, always. The Irish play their best, and they're on to the national championship game for the second year in a row. UConn has done it again for the 10th time. They are the champions! What happened last time you played UConn? I guess it came down to a stop. Open the wallet. Good! Or a shot. Or a shot. <laughs> Notre Dame with the win. On to the... Welcome to a raucous atmosphere in South Bend at the Choice Center in Purcell Pavilion. We've got a number one versus number two matchup here in December between two long-time rivals. It's Notre Dame and Connecticut in a top two showdown. Muffin McGraw and Gino Ariema meeting once more. The most common opponent for Gino Ariema over his decorated career has been the equally decorated Muffet McGraw. A couple of Hall of Fame coaches leading their squads in this top two showdown today. We are thrilled to be a part of it. Let's get to our starting lineups. Our public address announcer is Greg Sims. Guard, a six foot junior from Princeton, Indiana, number five, Jackie Young. And forward, a six foot four senior from Fremont, Nebraska, number 32, Jessica Shepard. And forward, a six foot three grad student from Pearland, Texas, number 11, Rihanna. Consecutive wins at home for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Plenty at stake and plenty to be excited about. Adam Amin, Kara Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, friends. It is good gang. to be back with you guys. Holly Rowe is with us as well. One versus two. We know the rivalry. We know how explosive this can be. But how do you evaluate this game at this point of the season? They split the last 16 meetings, and you're right. It's the most highly anticipated matchup. But normally, UConn is the favorite coming into this matchup. Normally, UConn is the defender national champion the undefeated team and we're saying Notre Dame is a team with the best chance to beat UConn well that's changed for this specific game you Notre Dame's a defending national champ Notre Dame is the unanimous number one team in the country it's interesting in this matchup that Notre Dame is coming in with that upper hand we're gonna learn a lot about UConn today we know their senior All-Americans Katie Lou Samuelson and Nafisa Collier but how UConn performs today and ultimately this season will rely heavily on the play of two underclassmen starters Sophomore Megan Walker played a limited role last year. She didn't play at all in the Final Four. Kristen Williams is the top freshman in the country, but hasn't played in this kind of environment. Coach Oriama will learn something about those players today. He told us this morning, our young guys have to compete. And then he said, we can win the game and lose the moment. He needs them to embrace the moment. What a moment we have for you this afternoon. They've played thriller after thriller, maybe none more thrilling than the one played on March the 30th this past spring. UConn busting out the black jerseys tonight. First time they've ever worn these. The tip is won by Brianna Turner, and the Irish start with the basketball. 
Notre Dame 7 and 0, UConn 6 and 0, and Jessica Shepard slimmed down quicker gets the scoring going tonight. Well, right away we see a post touch for Notre Dame. It's a point of emphasis for them offensively and they have the advantage in the front court in this matchup. And the front court defense from Shepard forces a turnover by Walker. There's one Hall of Famer, Muffet McGraw, the now two-time national champion after the Irish victory last year in the finals over Mississippi State. You said slim down Jess Shepard. I didn't recognize her when I walked in the gym today. I mean, it, it's unbelievable the work that she's done with her body. And she feeds Brianna Turner. Back comes Crystal Dangerfield. Now a junior. Open for three. Marina Mabry. Senior point guard with the moves against the freshman Williams. And here comes Kristen Williams, the number one player in the country out of high school. And she gets UConn on the board. We talked about Kristen Williams and how she was going to perform today. Katie Lou Samuelson was telling us, I think she is going to come up big. Gina Oriama loves how she does like to embrace the moment and how competitive, competitive of a player she is. The term gamer was used by Katie Lou Samuelson to describe Williams. Shepard short, rebounded by Collier. It's a couple good, strong post-defensive possessions by UConn. Williams goes barreling into the paint. Turner tried to draw the charge, and it's a foul against the grad student. Yeah, I thought that was a little bit late live, and remember, you can be in that circle as driving baseline. Yep, not all the way there. You know, Williams is an elite athlete, and she's an elite competitor. Yep. And so I, more than any other player in this game, I, I'm anxious to see how she plays. Like you said, Rebecca, at the top. Here comes Enrique Ogumbawale on the push. Pull up pop. Averaging 25 a game to start the season. Collier quickly ties the game. So watch Crystal Dangerfield guarding Arike Agumbawale in the half court. She got loose in transition there, but it's a total face guard, even if the ball's away from the floor, trying to limit Agumbawale's touches in the half court. There's Mabry with a quick trigger. Dangerfield on the push, ahead to Williams. A nice quick step to get past the defender to the rim. And Turner couldn't contest because she has already has one foul Neither of these teams, neither of these coaches wants to go particularly deep in the bench yep. to their bench, so they're going to have to be very careful in terms of foul trouble. Well, defense to offense, and UConn consistently one of the best teams in college basketball doing that, passing ahead, getting Christian Williams out in transition. This is a couple times. I didn't know if she saw the ball coming, <laughs> but the pass is going to be there. Gumbawale in traffic, well contested by Katie Lou Samuelson. That was well contested by Jackie Young. You know, I'm surprised we haven't seen a post upset. I think Notre Dame was trying to get that. They were. With, with Dangerfield checking with Gumbawale. And that is a shift from a year ago. UConn had the post advantage, you would think consistently against a team like Notre Dame. This year, that script has flipped. Dangerfield missed the three, and Ogumbawale is on the run. To Mabry, back to Arike. Up and down start you guys expected? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, listen, you've got a Notre Dame team with four seniors in the starting lineup, one junior, obviously a ton of experience, and Nafisa Collier and Katie Lusamus in a ton of experience as well. So I didn't expect there to be too many nerves here early on. There's Williams. Looking pretty fearless so far as a freshman in her first truly big game. She's got six of the UConn eight, and the Huskies are on top by two. Shepard, good play by Collier. Remember, UConn lost two outstanding defensive players in Kia Nurse and Gabby Williams. How about Kristen Williams burying a three, and she is off to the red-hot start. True freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, 
Ogumawale had position. Good adjustment in midair, and she's got six. And there it is, Kerr. Get yeah. Ogumawale in the post on a smaller danger field. Into traffic. Megan Walker saved it. Danger field, deep three. Turner tipped it to Shepard. Ogumbawale, pull up three. Rebounded by Kalia. Williams, the nice hesitation move to get past Ogumbawale. She is something else. We talked about it, an elite competitor. She's somebody that can hit the three. She, her pull-up jumper might be the best part of her offensive game and certainly has the quickness to get by you. She can do it in every area of the floor offensively. The pace of this game right now, she should be tired. That last play was not a tired play. Mabry missed the three. Danger field out of the pack. Blocked by Mabry. That was deflected by Collier. Ogumbawale against Katie Lou Samuelson. Got the contact, and it'll be a foul against Connecticut. Meeting number 49 between UConn and Notre Dame. Just another chapter in this incredible rivalry. UConn out to a 13-8 lead against Notre Dame. But of the eight Notre Dame points, it's no surprise that Arike Ogumbawale has scored six of them. She is picking up right where she left off. She hit possibly the two biggest games game-winning baskets we've ever seen in college basketball last year in the Final Four. And her spring tour got pretty hectic after that, whether it was trips to the Ellen Show, getting a jersey for her dog from Kobe Bryant, dancing with the stars, an ESPY for best play of the year, first to go to a woman. It has been an exciting season for her. When we asked Muffet McGraw, was it too much? You know, was her head too big or spinning because of all this attention? She said, absolutely not. She's been unbelievable. She couldn't wait to get back in the gym. But the most important thing, her lead Leadership. Hers was the voice that they heard when Marina Mabry was out with an injury, and that is the next step for Arike Ugumuale. Yeah, Mabry, the left quadricep injury kept her out for the first five games of the year as Megan Walker hits a jumper for UConn. They just got Mabry back the last two, and now three, including this game. So, still with a couple of injuries for Notre Dame, they have yet to play a game this year without all of their scholarship players available. They're kind of used to that scenario based on what we saw last year. Well, they won a national championship with a depleted roster. Let's not forget. But you look at Marina Mabry, and she's still not at peak game fitness yet. She's just recently back into the lineup. And, and I could tell early on, the first few minutes, just the pace of the game. She's not where she needs to be uh, fitness-wise as a leader for this team. You contrast that with Jessica Shepard. You spoke earlier about how she looks so different. She's down. 33 pounds just since September. She was out at USA with the USA national team. Minnesota Lynx head coach Cheryl Reeve was there and, and just said, you know, what do I need to do to play at the next level? And, and they talked about fitness and she took that to heart. And Muffet McGraw said, normally four minutes in the game, Shepard needs a sub. Well, you see here, she's able to stay in. The Bawale, as Holly was talking about, picking up right where she left off on the other side of the break. She's got 10 of the Irish 12. Here's Collier. Ogumbawale in the pack with the rebound. Pushing the tempo for Shepard. Such a dynamic force. Arika Ogumbawale is in transition. Beautiful pass, and the mitts on Shepard are pretty good as well. It's a nice catch and finish. Here's Williams, <laughs> six of six. How about this freshman? Gutsy, confident. Gino Ariema said, it's not a fake pretend confidence. It is genuine, real belief in herself. She looks like it right now. An incredible start to her game tonight. Jackie Young, who had a career high 32 points in the semifinal win over UConn last year, gets on the board. Katie Lou Samuelson, the sharpshooter cannot connect. Walker, the offensive rebound. Danger field, deep, and hits. Too many open looks from beyond the arc. And Notre Dame's got to close out to UConn shooters better. Certainly Williams has, has hit her fair share, but Danger has got a ton of open looks. She just hasn't been able to connect until that one. Mabry, the nice stop and go. High scoring first quarter. 
Gino Ariema made a comment earlier today, said Notre Dame might score the most points they've ever scored against us based on how fast these teams play, the pace at which they play. And Williams acclimating herself very well in her first Notre Dame-UConn matchup. This is incredible. I mean, think of what Kristen Williams is doing in the first quarter. She's 7-for-7 seven seven from the field, 16 points at the number one team in the country. Wow. Mabry, slick, smooth, stoic, and puts in another two. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Crystal Williams is putting on a show, and one of the reasons Gina Oriama said she will be the next great superstar in this game. After her first college game, Gina Oriama said in his press conference, did she even play? Was she out there? He really <laughs> rode her in some practices, and she got mad. But what she's learned is that she plays better when she's mad. She's definitely showing him. And, Rebecca, you talked to her earlier today. What did she say about being in that mad place? Well, she said, I definitely play better when I'm mad. And I asked her, do you know how to get there now without Coach Oriama getting you there? She said, oh, he got me there three games ago <laughs> when we played against Purdue, and I've been able to stay there. Dangerfield misses the three. She had a career-high 17 against Purdue. Williams has 16 in the first quarter today. Looking for Danielle Patterson. Young had it knocked away. Samuelson with a good pass to Walker. Beautiful look by Katie Lee Samuelson to see Walker streaking through and deliver it with a left-hand bullet pass. Samuelson averaging 20 points, six rebounds, and a few assists as well in the early part of the season. Ogumbawale for three. Rebounded by Brianna Turner. Ogumbawale again. And Walker clears. Final 40 seconds of the opening fast-paced quarter. Williams for three. First miss on eight tries. Tip to Collier for two. Yeah, just UConn's a quicker team in transition. Defense to offense. Notre Dame's transition defense hasn't been great. And they're quicker to the loose balls right now. It's the reason why they're up seven. Largest lead on either side in the opening quarter. Notre Dame can essentially hold for the final shot. Gumbawale finds Patterson. She knocks it down. Dangerfield will not get the shot off. Irish hit their last six shots of the opening quarter. UConn shoots 57% from the floor. These two coaches and these two teams thinking pace was going to be a factor. Yeah, it was. 49 in the first quarter in meeting number 49 between UConn and Notre Dame. Back in South Bend, you're watching the ACC on ESPN. 27-22, UConn on top. And of those 27 points, the true freshman, Kristen Williams, out of Little Rock, Arkansas, had 16 of them. If I told you a guard in this game went off in the first quarter and had 16, you'd probably think it was a Goomba Wale. But it's been the freshman, the youngin' for UConn, Kristen Williams, number one player in the country coming out of high school, the lefty, a mature, composed, First effort against the number one team in the country. Been so impressed by her skill and her poise, Rebecca. I mean, Katie Sanderson was telling us this morning, she said she's going to play big because this is the kind of player that she is. She likes these big moments. This is her first true big moment in a UConn uniform. On the road at number one. And she was dynamic in the opening quarter. Katie Lou Samuelson, good defense by Brianna Turner. They missed that a year ago when she was out with an ACL injury. Abby Prohaska is on the floor, another true freshman for Notre Dame. And a traveling violation on Jackie Young. With the pace this game is being played, Muffin McGraw even just giving players a couple extra seconds yep. on the bench around the timeout. Coach Ramey yet to go to his bench. Well, it's hard for her to have Marina maybe off the floor because she's really the only point guard that they have healthy. Yep. And you saw just the travel by Jackie Young as she's trying to decipher the situation, figure out what to do, and sometimes that results in a turnover. Jackie Young handled a ton of the point guard duties while Mabry and Jordan Nixon have been out. Walker hits a two. Jordan Nixon's a freshman for Notre Dame who has been out the last five games due to concussion protocol. Good player, and she's going to be an important part of this rotation moving forward when she gets back. Here's Young with space. Collier another rebound. There is Nixon. Freshman out of New York City.
Walker, good look. Collier and Ogumbawale battling for the board, and it's last touch by UConn. So UConn has been able to get the shots that they want facing up Turner and Shepard with their guards. Looks to be like attack them, right? Attack their feet. Turner did get the block from behind with that length, but she hasn't gotten every one. So I think UConn needs to continue to be aggressive on their drives because you can get to the basket when you're squared one-on-one -on -one against these Notre Dame defenders. There's Turner in the post, and she'll draw the Walker foul. Conversely, put Walker where she's a little less comfortable. Playing defense in the post against a bigger player. Yep. And you'll uh, be interested for this if you're an Irish fan. Notre Dame and Oklahoma in the Jimmy V Classic on Tuesday, the 24th annual Jimmy V Classic from Madison Square Garden. Florida and West Virginia have had some good battles these last few years. SEC and Big 12 have fun matchups because of their styles. You'll see those two games Tuesday night on ESPN and the ESPN app. Shepard the denial. UConn still plenty of time. Back door from Samuelson to Dangerfield. Numbers for Enrique Ogumbawale and the Irish. Young in the face of Samuelson finishes. Turner with the block on Samuelson. Second all time. In scoring, Ogumbawale getting the assist here. I've always felt like when you play Connecticut, in number situations, you have to knock those out of the park. If you get two on one or three on two in transition, you have to score on those because of how prolific their offense is. And knocking things out of the park defensively is what Notre Dame can do this year with Brianna Turner on the floor defensively that we didn't see a year ago. A couple blocks already today. That's their second leading shot blocker all time. Number one, Ruth Riley, 2001. MOP in the Final Four championship run. Shepard in traffic, denied. Turner from the top came all the way down to help out and clean it up. Field against the taller Turner. Williams, after making her first seven, she's missed two in a row. And Collier will go to the free throw line on, I believe, a Jackie Young foul. You see that possession, though, what I was talking about with post defensively, right? Turner gets beat to the baseline. Yep. It's a kick to Williams. Now Williams beats Shepard to the baseline. I mean, that's where the shot creation is going to come from Connecticut, I think, just facing up those posts and getting into the paint and forcing help to come. For substitution of the night for UConn, Walker is out. And the other freshman of this class, Olivia Nelson Adota, out of Winder Barrow, Georgia, is into the game. Collier sinks both. Brings a little more size defensively. You know, Notre Dame's been pretty good getting the ball into the low block. Adota brings a little more length in there. And she was boxing out Turner, but didn't matter because Shepard hit the shot. Opening half has been played in a nine-point window. Samuelson, one of the best three-point shooters in the country, has not made one yet. Ogumbawale the pull-up. How about that silencer from the senior out of Missouri, Nafisa Collier? It's December 2nd, and we're seeing this level of basketball being good played ball. right now. This, this is, is good great ball. basketball. Good cut by Turner, and she draws the Collier foul.
uh, this is a layup for her. I mean, she's so comfortable. She's been uber aggressive in transition because that's where she can get loose a little bit. And I talked about Nafisa Collier and her ability and her calm approach to the game. She's a bucket getter as well. But what's been interesting is when Arike gets the ball in transition, there's been a little bit more energy, a little bit more of a spurt trying to, to get numbers. And in the half court, it's been a little bit more muted because of how much attention they're paying to, to her. Well, Gumbo Wale is 5 for 9 to start. Remember the two meetings against Connecticut last year? She got off to some rocky starts in both of those games and recovered nicely, especially in the semis. And she's off to a good start today for the Irish. So is Collier. So is Williams. I think you could say that about just about every player on the floor today. Five to shoot. Dangerfield, the mismatch, the fading base shot over Turner. That was such a high-level play. Because her the way she, she jumped was diagonal instead of to the basket, yep. knowing that she needed to create the angle to get it over Turner's outstretched arm. What a play from Dangerfield. Young connects. She's got six. I don't think we need halftime. Let's just, let's, just, <laughs> Yo, let's keep this going, Yo, man. man. We could have made, made some earlier dinner reservations with this pace. <laughs> Dangerfield. Last second pass to Collier. Countered and a foul. A chance at a three-point play on the other side for the Huskies. High pace, high octane, a lot of fun. So far. Absolutely. I mean, you look at two of the best scoring teams in the country, and they're having a hard time stopping one another. And you would think with all these points that Katie Lou Samuelson would be on the board, the 20-point-per-game scorer. She is 0 for 5 from the floor. So everybody else getting it done. Well, Gumbo Wale. Got a hustle by Patterson, but it'll be UConn ball. High degree of difficulty on a lot of these yeah, shots. Look at this. I mean, it's almost, Euro, it's a little Euro. It's got a little European flavor, Euro step flavor to it. And just to create that space. Again, if she goes completely down the lane with that pivot or with that launch foot, that shot gets blocked. Good feed, and the freshman, Nelson Adoda, with her first two points. Lobo, we we're talking about this during the break. It's not as if it's bad defense. This is pretty good defense from both sides. This has just been a really impressive offensive game. Players making tough shots, making big plays over pretty decent defense. Ooh, Katie Lou Samuelson took a shot to the face. Uh, the double team. Yep. Nice read. Nice read. Samuelson was kind of saying, you see her motioning towards D. Kantner that Maybe she got an elbow towards the head, towards the face. Not sure if it was in the middle of that fray. She picks up her second foul, sending Jackie Young to the line. But and Katie Lou Samuelson feeling the uh, effects. Remember, Samuelson had a handful of injuries that she was dealing with a year ago and has dealt with over the course of her career, a tough player. Yeah, might have gotten the elbow right to the chops when Young went up for the attempt. That that looked to me like it was while she was going up in yeah. the shooting yeah. motion, not to clear not space. Not to clear right? out, yeah, yeah. She was part of a natural yeah. shooting motion. Young's got seven. Gumbawale knocks it out. Enrique Ogumbawale. Preseason ACC Player of the Year, only player in the country so far with three 30 point games, including their last one, 30 against Iowa. They dominated Iowa, and that's a team that has arguably the best score in the country in Megan Gustafson. Gumbawale picks up a foul here. I know Kara Lawson's eyes lit up for this one. Let's Big go, one in the NFC East. It's been a jumbled division all year. Big win the other night for Dallas over New Orleans. Oh. So the Redskins and the Eagles right in the thick of things. Monday Night Football, Joe Tessitore, Jason Witten, Booger McFarland, Lisa Salters with the call you on Monday Night. You did not have to bring up the Cowboys win it's on a, that problem. It's an important win. I'm trying, I'm trying to give you some context. Come on. Samuelson misses short. Give the ball to Adrian Peterson. Let's just let him run. Yes. 
this has not been a typical Katie Lucy no. Nielsen performance by any stretch. That was a difficult shot because she's had a couple shots where her feet have been set under her. 0 for 6 right now. She's had 15 or more points in every game, three times with 20 this year already. Skies for that rebound over Shepard. Just coming off a season high 23 points. She's gone 9 of 11 in the last two games from three. Gets an assist here as she finds the freshman Nelson Adota. Holly? Well, you know, one of the things Gino Oriama has been on Katie Lou Samuelson for through the years is that she's not a shot hunter. He wants her to have more of a killer instinct to go out and hunt her shot. They talked about it in the offseason. You know, he brought up to her that. Hey, he didn't go to her as one of the final options in that game against Notre Dame in a crucial moment. Why? He wants her to be the one that he trusts, and he never doubts in that moment. Part of it was she wasn't healthy. She had a severe ankle injury that ended up requiring surgery over the summer. But you can see when sometimes when she gets hit in the mouth or hit in the face, it sparks her a little. Let's see if she gets going here after she took that shot to the chops. Well, the one thing I like that she's done, even though she's 0 for 6, is she, she has been a playmaker. Six assists. And that's a, that's a next generation part of her game as well, to be able to create for her teammates. And so that's a positive sign. We saw the rebound. She went up and snatched yes. two on the defensive end. So we talked about the evaluation of this game. It is one, it is two, it is Notre Dame-UConn, it is the rivalry. We know what happened back in March in the Final Four with the incredible shot. But what should people take away from this game? It's been a high-level game so far. Regardless of result, what are you guys going to take away from this game based on what you have seen and what you will see? Well, I'm always anxious to see the new players in this game and how they react. We, we talked about Kristen Williams. She sure. reacted pretty well. And then I'm always anxious to see the steps that the veterans have made. Where have they improved in these situations? I mean, what, what can we expect at this point of the season? Sure. I did not. I expected... These teams will be going up and down the floor. I did not expect this high level offensively from both of these teams. They both look really good so far this season against different competition, especially out in transition. But right now, this is as good as it could be. And both teams shooting 50% or better so far. With two and a half to go in the opening half. Williams guarding Mabry. There's Young into Samuelson. Another play. Good defense. Just even better offense. Yeah. Good backdoor by Samuelson. Missed the shot. Nelson Adona with a second opportunity, and she'll go to the free throw line. She's played really well, too, coming in off the bench for Connecticut. Samuelson in there. Good defense by Shepard, and Adota just continues to go after it, go after it. Great length. Great athlete. She dunked in the McDonald's All-American yep. <laughs> event as senior in high school. Not a great free throw shooter. <laughs> you know, to her credit, she was 9 of 13 before that one. So that was a little odd to see. We mentioned Williams, the number one overall recruit. Nelson Adota, the number five overall recruit She's in this now class. 9 for 14. 9 for 14, yes. yes. That one, much, much more to Rebecca Lobo and Gino Oriema's liking, I would imagine, as well. Samuelson gets a breather and getting a talking to from Gino Oriema. Dangerfield, Walker, Williams, Collier, and Nelson Adota for UConn. Good pass by Shepard to Turner. I know Rebecca Lobo loves it. Big to big. Yeah, they're always looking for one another. Just Shepard's a terrific passer. Yeah. Carrie, you talked about her mitts earlier. She can catch anything. She can also deliver nicely on the pass. Dangerfield with six. Step back, long two. Ooh, and a foul called against UConn. Collier trying to get position on Mabry, and that is another foul on UConn. Jess Shepard, I mean, simple pass, but knows that Turner can get past Nelson Adoto on the bounce, and they just look for one another. When you have two players, post players, who can complement each other like those two, they will continually look for one another. Bonus time. A couple of shots here for Marina Mabry. After the second Collier foul. I love Mabry. I, I mean, I, I just love her confidence. I love her attitude. 
Uh, she's probably top five in trash talk. <laughs> not, just, not just quantity, guys, trash but quality. All of, trash not talk just, all American. Yeah, 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 I love it. Not just quantity. She gives you the quality as well in the trash talking game. Dangerfield trying to create. Williams for three. Excellent defensive possession. Mabry to tie it. About a 12 second difference, shot clock and game clock. That's yeah, a good look. Mabry's a good three point yeah, shooter. Sure. And got yourself in the two for one. Nelson Adota flashing to the block. Shepard lost it. Dangerfield has it, and the Huskies can hold for the final shot of the half. Wants the clear out. Off the Collier screen. Crystal Dangerfield, and Walker will not get a shot off. We expected it up and down. We expected pace. We expected a high level of play. I think this even exceeded our expectations for the first 20 minutes. Gino Ariema is with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, you were anxious to see how your young players would perform and compete in this environment. How do you describe what Christian Williams did in that first quarter? Well, I wish we would throw her the ball more often in the second quarter. Uh, she's never one you have to worry about. Her competitiveness, uh, she's one of the most competitive kids we've had come to Connecticut, and uh, and she's really skilled offensively. So we just got to find a way to get her the ball more often in the second half. Also, Katie Lou Samuelson hasn't scored yet in this game. When she just came out, you had a few choice words for her. I couldn't hear him. Will you share what you said? No, I just said she's got to play better defense. Because you know what? If, if she plays better defense, then everything else will come up. Sometimes, you know, you try really hard to score points. You got to take your focus off scoring. Thank you, Coach. Eight months after we saw a thriller back in Columbus, Ohio, we saw an excellent half of basketball, a tight one through one half. Nothing makes me happier than sending it to the Dodge Halftime Report with our friends Maria, Nell, and Andy. And we welcome you back to the Women's Jimmy V presented by Corona here in South Bend, Indiana. I know all three of us are proud, pleased, and very privileged to be with Holly Rowe here today. And we're proud to be a part of this. This has been an outstanding first half of ball so far. Adam Amin, Carol Oss, Rebecca Lobo, your thoughts? I'm, I'm impressed with how UConn has not only competed on the glass, they're, they're plus in the rebound margin yeah. against this Notre Dame front court and also points in the paint tied as well. I thought that was a decided advantage to Notre Dame to start the game. UConn, that's a big reason why they're up three. Two of those front court players, Nafisa Collier, Kata Lee Samuelson, each have two fouls. This is a Notre Dame team that has had tremendous success this season getting to the free throw line. They lead the nation and free throws made. They got to the line ten times in the first half. Will that become more of a story here in the second? Same 10 that began the game, begin the second half. Jackie Young a little off target. Largest lead in the first half was eight for Connecticut. Notre Dame led by for, for uh, led by two for a minute in this game. A lone lead change took place in the first quarter. And three ties. Collier, close to a double-double already, puts in another field goal. She's got 12 points and nine rebounds. She's just a bucket. She's a walking bucket every time she catches it. She nearly 60% from the floor in the first seven games. Kara, back when you and I played, we wouldn't know what that means. Just said, someone said you were a bucket. I knew what a bucket was. <laughs> I don't know that we were calling it a bucket. Well, maybe not in my day yet, but in yours. Shepard working hard on the glass. I can assure you that I was uh, that, that word was not in my vocabulary. You weren't a walking right bucket. No. Lock and bucket in the first quarter. Kristen Williams had 16 in the first quarter, zero in the second. Now she's got a new career high with 18. Well, well you mean to tell me that you never scored and said, I get buckets. <laughs> <laughs> that never came out of your mouth. I, I don't think so. Okay. 
I'm surprised. <laughs> I mean, now when I'm playing with my kids in the driveway, <laughs> but you get a lot of buckets too. <laughs> and I say that. Yeah. That's a dominant, dominant series in that in that Lobo driveway. <laughs> Young draws the foul. During the halftime break, Holly Rowe is with Muffet McGraw, Notre Dame head coach. Well, Coach, I know you wanted to establish your inside game. How pleased are with you, how you've been able to do that so far? Yeah, it's a big disappointment. I think we can do a lot better. But uh, really, right now, our defense is what's really troubling me. How do you change it? What have you said to them about their defense? Well, it's mostly effort, just the transition defense. We let Williams get off for a bunch of layups, got her confident. Uh, that was a problem. Thank you, Coach. Notre Dame in the first place played pre predominantly zone defense and first couple possessions here in the second half we've seen them come out in man to man we, we saw them do that a lot last year Muffet McGraw worried about foul trouble in the yep. first half and then when players weren't there she could play a more aggressive style in the second half speaking of fouls Collier now has three so we'll see how Gina Oriema counteracts that Collier has just picked up her 10th rebound so she's got her fifth double double in seven games this year we saw that during the NCAA tournament a lot, too, from Notre Dame. They'd go man in the second uh, half of games. They played no man-to-man -man against Sabrina Ionescu in the NCAA tournament, Oregon's outstanding guard. Then in the second half, they blitzed her a couple times, and that was the adjustment they made. Foul on Shepard, her second, sends Samuelson to the line. The 24th annual Jimmy V Classic from Madison Square Garden. You'll see these Irish on the other side. The men's team against Oklahoma in their first ever meeting. And then Florida, West Virginia. It almost seems to be a nice pace to the games when it's SEC and Big 12. We'll see that Tuesday night on ESPN and the ESPN app. Samuelson with her first two points of the game. They come at the line. And Shepard backs in for the two. Uh, Collier has three. Go right, yeah, go at, right him. at him. Williams to the other side of the rim. Rebounded by Young. Mabry breaking loose. Runs it down. Tried to save it, but it goes to Walker. Samuelson taking it herself and trying to get going with her first field goal. This matches UConn's largest lead of the game at eight. Could have pulled up for the three, instead decided to attack and get an easier two. Shepard. Collier with the up and under, blocked by Brianna Turner, her third of the game. Ogo Mowale back the other way. And a blocking foul is called as Kristen Williams tried to step in for the charge. Peter Lee Samuelson there in transition, got it. She's very comfortable pulling up and taking that three. Struggled from the perimeter so far tonight, so instead goes in with the left. The next three that Samuelson hits will put her at the top of the Connecticut all-time chart. Right now, she's got 311 career three-pointers tied with Maya Moore at the top of that list. Young, tough adjustment. Williams, denied by Ogumbawale as Dangerfield tried to pass it up. Katie Lou Samuelson inside. Ogumbawale ahead to the... Uh, quick moving Shepard. That's something Muffin McGraw said has been a major improvement for Shepard, just running the floor with that slimmed down frame. <laughs> Collier can't get it to go. Samuelson and Young scrapping for it, and a foul is called on the floor. We'll go against Jackie Young, her second. Say foul trouble or just fatigue. I'm not sure that we will see a substitution. In the <laughs> I mean, my favorite question we asked Buff McGraw, you know, I said, you know, how deep will you go today? She goes five. Probably five. No, I think your question was, how, how deep are you comfortable? comfortable going? Going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five. She said, I'll have to go deeper than yeah, that. But yeah. I'm comfortable at five. 
you know, these types of games early in the season where you don't have your freshmen exposed to those types of situation yet. There's obviously a ton of respect on both sides of this rivalry for the players on the opposite side, for the staffs on the opposite side. They want their veterans in there. Walker hits a three. Biggest lead of the game belongs to UConn at nine. These two teams played up in Connecticut last year. It was a big second half for UConn that got them the win, particularly in the fourth quarter. Ogumba Wale from the baseline knocks it down for her first point to the third. Walker. Turner threw some contact on Megan Walker. It'll be a foul against UConn, Notre Dame ball. When she gets this little rhythm dribble, I, I always think she's going to make it. That just yeah. that some, some players just get into their shot better with that nice little rhythm dribble before they shoot it. Enrique is one of them. I think the Notre Dame post players, Jess Shepard goes to the bench, need to slow down when they catch it at the free throw line and turn and face. The last two jumpers to me by Shepard were rushed. That jumper will be there, but they need to slow down and look at the offense and look what options they have. There you go. Jackie Young with a tough finish. She's got 12. Back to a five-point game. Ooh, Dangerfield may have traveled a bit. Here comes Ogumbawale. Tried to volleyball set it back up. And I believe it's a hell ball. I don't, know why, I don't ball. know why she double pumped there. I'm not sure why she double pumped on that one. And she looks a little bit frustrated. We'll step aside. Five to play in the third. For a trip to the national championship. Ogumbawale. the support for this national championship women's basketball team today on a Sunday when their college football team made it into the playoffs they are packed into this arena I'm here up in the Raptors hello we are here I mean to the very top these fans are here supporting their women's basketball team I absolutely love it another sellout in fact the 54th all-time at Notre Dame they have won 97 of their last 99 home games. The two losses came two Decembers in 2014 and 2016 to this UConn team. Right now, this UConn team leads by five. Notre Dame's won 28 straight home games since that December 16 loss to UConn. Dangerfield, how, that one touched every part of the iron. Next time we're here, can we get Holly a better position? <laughs> Holly was hustling, man, all day. Mamrie hits a big three, their first of the game. The second time tonight when the crowd's gotten big, it's been Nafisa Collier to settle things down. Over the right shoulder with the little fadeaway. That's her move. Gumbawale into traffic. And she'll draw the foul. 0 for 6 from 3 before this, the Irish. Well, that's what Mabry does. I mean, she is their consistent outside threat. You've seen Nafisa Collier with the answer. You knew it would come at some point. Yeah. I mean, three-point shooting isn't a strong point of this Notre Dame team. But if there's a three-pointer to be made, you can definitely count on Marina Mabry not being afraid to take it. Enrique Gumboale at the free throw line. Gino Ariema said, especially in transition, you've got a player where you know she's either going to score or she's going to get herself to the free throw line. Right now on the season, averaging over seven free throw attempts a game. She knows how to get there. The Irish have made more free throws in the early part of the season than any team in the country. 
He had come in through seven games, making 133 of them. Here's Samuelson. On the drive, a good ball fake, and she takes it in. That was good patience by UConn defensively, because initially, the initial actions, Notre Dame defended those well. They just waited enough to get a gap, and Katie Lou took advantage. Young, no, Shepard's there. And right now, with Notre Dame in the man-to-man, -man, they had been with switches. Katie Lou Samuelson, the, the UConn player, with the advantage. UConn spreading the floor a little bit more here. Collier, tough shot. Shepard needs help, nearly threw it away. Young saved it, got it blocked by Collier. Tipped by Williams, Dangerfield lost it and got it back. Williams breaks ahead for the layup. Playing above her freshman year designation. And how she used her body almost like a soccer player, even though she was using her hands to shield to be able to corral the ball initially on the defensive end. Patterson, a good look. Boy, in and out. Shepard again. Hung on the iron. Let's see who this foul is going to be on, too. Nice job by Nafisa Collier to get that block, and what a catch and finish by Kristen Williams. But now, some issues with depth and foul trouble. Four fouls on Nafisa Collier. We still have about 12 minutes to play in this game. Well, she can't foul there, Adam. She just can't. And, and that's an awareness that she, that she has to have. I thought she was pretty solid on that play, actually. Yep. I mean, if we get a chance to see it again, we can see it again. But, you know, part of this, Rebecca, is not putting yourself in a position. Right there. Oh, you see that? The arm. And, yep, and you, you're you just can't right. you can't do that yep. because you have to understand the time of the game. If it's fourth quarter, OK, you don't want to give her a layup, but there's 12 minutes left in the game. Yeah. And now you put your team in this in this tough position. It's one of the biggest battles post player's face is just staying straight up. Yeah. It doesn't matter what level of play you're at. Your arm comes down. Even sometimes if it's not contact, it's going to make the referee blow the whistle and it's going to give you a foul. It's, it's a constant battle for a post player to keep their arm straight up. Because you feel like you can get that block. Yes. You can spark that break. You can make that big play, I would imagine. Yes, you would imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> only imagine, my friend. The Collier goes to the bench. The freshman is back on, Olivia Nelson Adota. Never got called for three seconds, did you? Never. Not once. <laughs> Samuelson pull up from the baseline. Now starting to get going here in the second half. She becomes vital on the offensive end because you lose Collier, Collier who's yep. a reliable offensive threat right now. You, know, you don't have that with Nelson Adota. You hope yep. that she can just give you solid minutes defensively and rebounding. Good backdoor by Mabry, rejected by Nelson Adona. Impact play from the true freshman. Williams, the other freshman, puts it in. 22 for Kristen Williams. This is the first true road game of her career. Ogumbo Wale with the floater. And then she'll draw another foul. Uh, back door. Nelson <laughs> Adota from the weak side. I mean, just a, a terrific athletic play. And then another freshman on the offensive end who's been the best offensive player for UConn from the beginning since this game started, Kristen Williams. What a performance. Gino Ariema has a uh, charity golf tournament every year. And I think a lot of people got their first taste of the personality of Kristen Williams during that golf tournament where media was there they asked her well give me a little bit of a sense for the season and she basically to paraphrase said we're going to get that national championship 
A couple of days later, there was a text waiting on Gino Ariema's phone from Kristen Williams saying, I'm sorry, I, I may have overstepped my bounds in that moment. That was one of the most telling stories to give you a sense of what type of freshman that Gino Ariema has recruited, the number one player in the country in Kristen Williams. Oh, here's what I love about Kristen. I got the opportunity to coach her a couple yep. summers ago in three on three. And the thing that I loved about her was that she was about winning. Like a lot of players say they're about winning, but their actions don't back that up. Kristen Williams did everything. She can defend at a high level. She can score at a high level. Uh, she's a terrific player, and she's going to be one of the best players to wear a UConn uniform because she can do everything. She was our fourth leading scorer on that team. There are only four players on that team. <laughs> and why I say that is she was our best player, but it wasn't about scoring for her. It was about winning. Yes. And we see today she can score, but above all else, she wants to win, and it's going to be a lot of fun watching her play in stores the next four seasons. Final seconds. Samuelson to Walker. Blocked by Young. Still time on the clock. Gets it to Ogumbawale, and it will not count either way. Still tight. It was a three-point UConn lead at halftime. They ballooned it up to a large six. It's been such a fun back and forth. One versus two game. And we got ten minutes to play here in South Bend. Back in South Bend, the last time Notre Dame and UConn met in the Final Four, it was a thrilling Notre Dame victory. Both Gino Ariema and Katie Lou Samuelson talked about it. Yeah, that was a hard one to walk away from. That's a hard one to go back and think about. I, I haven't watched the game. It's probably the first time I haven't watched the game in a long, long time. I looked back, I've watched the game about 10 times now, trying to figure out everything that's going on, and um, I feel confident in what I learned from it, and I'm going to use that the next time we play them. Katie Lewis Samuelson said she avoided watching the game up until this summer when she got a chance to work with Kobe Bryant during the summertime. Her team in high school, her club team, practiced at the same place that Kobe Bryant's club teams would have practiced. So they had some opportunities to work together. No surprise, Kobe Bryant, who had a great connection to both UConn and to Enrique Ogumbawale last year, tweeting about this game, Holly Rowe, no shock, watching some good ball. Well, I want to be clear, Kobe Bryant is a UConn fan. Like, he came to the Final Four, sat behind the UConn bench right. in UConn gear. However, after Enrique Gumbawale hit that shot, he was so gracious, tweeted at her. He later went on the Ellen show with her, surprised her, and met her. And he gives so much back to women's basketball. So, Kobe, I know you're watching. We appreciate all you give back to our game. Thank you very much. Listen, real recognizes real, yep. and killers recognize other killers. <laughs> and that's what Kobe recognized in Enrique. How many killers per roster can you really have is what I wanted <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do that later. That's a team for later this season. We got a long season. We, yeah, we got a long season. We, we can't. We can't throw out all our numbers at the, at the start here. Come on. That was a Kobe-esque shot from the baseline, fading by Samuelson. Still hasn't hit a three, but now has ten points in the second half. This is a marquee matchup in this sport. Jackie Young drawing some contact. Well, you have to create enough separation with that length from Turner. So the step back for Katie Lou, and she's starting to get in a little bit of ry a rhythm. And you mentioned it, Rebecca, after Collier got that fourth foul, you sensed a little bit more ownership and a little bit more aggression from Katie Lou, understanding that she needs to, to, to help put her team in position to win this one. Players need to understand who is on the floor with them and how that impacts their role at that moment. Contact away from the ball. It'll go against Jackie Young. That's her third now. She's the only Notre Dame player with three fouls. And as you mentioned, Collier has four for UConn. Nelson Adota has three. 
Williams into traffic, and Jackie Young may have just gotten a little bit on there. They're going to call it on Shepard in that traffic. But maybe Jackie Young had deterred the shot, but Shepard called for the foul. Oh, I thought Enrique got Christian Williams more than Young did. The young didn't get her at yeah. all. I, I thought I thought it was Arike on the drive after she was beaten, uh, trying to, to poke it around. That's uh, three on Shepard. Incredible day in the first two road game of Kristen Williams' career. She's got a game high 23. UConn up by eight, eight and a half to go. Ooh, Shepard was in position. Might not have been expecting it there though. A turnover. Well, this is a critical stretch for Notre Dame mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the margin is eight right now. And we've seen UConn over the years go on those vaunted runs where they're able to put teams away. And one thing I will say, this Notre Dame team a season ago never got rattled when they were down late in games. They stayed composed and stayed true to her, who they were and were able to work their way back into them. They had a double-digit comeback in Vancouver against Oregon State, a top-ten team at the time. Brianna Turner with the putback. That's one way they can do it. Notre Dame can be so good on the offensive glass, getting second opportunities. Williams again. Counted and a foul for the freshman. She has been absolutely spectacular. On her way to catch herself from, from the fall, she yells, and one. Look at the competitive nature of this young lady, the ability to finish when she's undercut. A little flex there, too. Yep. <laughs> Let him know from Little Rock. Yep. And Gino said it. It is not fake. It is not pretend. It is not a freshman trying to acclimate themselves. It is real, pure confidence from a kid who just started playing Division I college basketball seven games ago. Oh, what a pass by Shepard. Ogumbawale off target. And Nelson Adota has done some good stuff on the glass in this game. Walker on Turner. The defense by Turner. Seven to shoot. Dangerfield, the stop and pop. And this one's going to stay with UConn, and guess who is in the thick of it to keep the possession? Williams again. Yeah, it's just because she battled for it. She created that possession for UConn. You know, watch her battle all along the baseline. Beats Jackie Young to the punch, and then can tell if it's Mabry or, or Young that poke it out, but... It's a great play by Williams, hustle play. Oh, Samuelson cuts to the rim. Nelson Adota had it, knocked away by Turner. Big possession. Ogumbawale to Young. Six and a half to go. down to five. Samuelson, tough shot, bank it in, and a foul! Everything about this possession was perfect for Notre Dame defensively until the end. And Katie Lou Samuelson, you see the emotion with the and one. Off the, off the glass. I was just trying to get it up and hit the rim so the shot clock didn't go off. Most players, don't swing your arms. <laughs> don't swing your arms. That's something you already mentioned. It's so hard in that heat of the moment to make sure you stay in firm defensive position rather than reaching over the top. You're going to check to see if it was a two or a three. It looked like a two uh, from our angle. The refs yeah. will take a look at that, and they confirm it. That looked a lot like the play she made against South Carolina last year. I remember in the Elite Eight, same spot, left wing, really tough backup shot, hit the three, and that seemed to spark 
UConn. These are the types of plays that spark Katie Lou Samuelson. What a different player she's been offensively in the second half from the first half. Especially when Nafisa Collier went out, understood what that meant for her and how to change her mindset offensively, become a bit more aggressive. You see the numbers right there. And she has given Connecticut its first double-digit lead of the game without Collier on the floor with the foul trouble. Really good dribbling by Mabry, the in and out. En route to the rim for two. And she yells, get a stop on her way back down the court. I mean, that's that's essentially what the Irish need to do in this last six minutes, is they have to find a way to disrupt UConn's rhythm on the offensive end. Back to the zone. Samuelson in the middle of it. Walker the rebound and the foul. I don't think Nelson Adoto will get us something in the box score for this, right? I mean, she won't. Right. But her battling, watch her battle. That creates the opportunity for Megan Walker. And now another and one. UConn is outworking Notre Dame right now. Loose balls, rebounds, and that's why they've been able to stretch this out to a double-digit lead. Earlier in this half, Nelson Adota, just because she posted up hard, created a driving lane for Katie Lou Samuelson. She has performed very, very well in her minutes. Another big game tonight, Baylor in South Carolina. If you haven't got a look at that Baylor bunch, this UConn team, by the way, will, before conference play begins for them, will have that game on ESPN. That is a potential Final Four crew. Shepard draws some contact. Now that's four, I believe, on Nelson Adota. It is four fouls indeed. You see the fourth leading scorer in the country, Arike Ogumbawale, trying to get things going here in the second half. Nice touch. Turner got it to Shepard, couldn't corral it cleanly, still loose on the ground, and I think Williams was the last to touch, diving for the ball. Gumbawale has looked a little bit more to be a facilitator in this half. We've seen it in transition. We saw it on that play there as she's getting defended, finding open teammates. Mabry passed it to Turner. That was a good look. Approaching five minutes to play here in the fourth. Mabry aggressive. Nelson Adota corrals it. Walker fires. Ogumbawale. Into danger field. Left it short. Fighting for the rebound and contact. We'll step aside. Another tight one in this UConn Notre Dame rivalry. Kristen Williams has been the best player on the floor for UConn. Efficient with her offense, and she showed us a little bit of everything. You see the three-point shot? She's gotten out in transition with that elite athleticism, and her drives in the second half with her offhand, the right hand, she's a lefty, showing the strength and the physical ability to finish those shots. An incredible performance, 26 points. The big question coming into this game for Gina Warriam was, our can our big our, our young guys compete? They're going to have to compete and all three of them in new positions this year have done a great job so far. They've scored 42 of the UConn 76. And then a foul called against Notre Dame. It went against Turner. Well, that's a crucial call in a 10-point game with 440 to play. Walker and the reach in by Mabry that was a foul the last stretch of 100 games at home for Notre Dame the only two losses came in December of 14 and December of 16 to UConn you know Ariema's crew has won seven straight against top two teams This has been a top two matchup literally a handful of times out of the 49. And then 
will just get a whistle here against Notre Dame's bench. Oh, I think Gino Oriema and Rika Gumbawale were having a conversation over there. Uh, Katie Lou Samuelson is at the free throw line. I think Ogumbawale was a little surprised. And she does get tagged with the technical foul. You see Enrique uh, upper left of your screen. They're talking. He was on the opposite side of the floor from us. I wonder what was said. Well, the official was right there. Yeah. So she heard whatever was said. Right. Right. Yeah, you don't want to speculate yeah, that kind yeah, of thing, yeah. but I did see the two of them chatting. Well, it, it looked to me like uh, Gino was talking to the official, saying something, and that Enrique might, might have inserted herself in the conversation. Again, I don't want to speculate too much, but uh, you look at the upper left there, there's the official, and then. But uh, yeah, I wonder why Enrique was tagged with the technical there. It does become a crucial swing in this game. Three points for UConn at the foul stripe. Samuelson's now got 15 points on the game. And the largest lead of the game is 13. Mabry misses a three. The Irish are one of 11 from three-point range in this game. Dangerfield, the hesitation. That was slick. All of this happening here with Nafisa Collier on the bench. Yes. They've expanded on the lead with Collier on the bench. She now comes to the scorer's table for the stretch run. Young draws the contact from Samuelson. It's a tough move. Uh, Left-handed, nice little stop and go. The finish with the left hand, I mean, she, she's showing us a lot. I mean, they're finishing around the rim, right? Yep. That right-handed layup over the outstretched arm of Brianna Turner in the first half, the lefty in the second half. And to me, the issue for Notre Dame, uh, when they've been in their man-to-man, -man, which has been the bulk of the second half, is they've been, they have not been able to keep UConn in front. It seems like UConn has counteracted that with a little bit more floor spacing. It feels like it's less congested in the, in the second half than it was maybe in the first. Well, it can be, right? Because of the because when you're playing man to man, you have shooters, and you have Katie Lou Samuelson, you have to honor Kristen Williams, you have to honor Dangerfield, who you have to honor. That that gives you more spacing on the floor. Now Mabry gets a little over aggressive there. Want to put Dangerfield at the free throw stripe. Crystal Dangerfield, I, I saw her this fall, and she's always been a strong player. But she's even stronger this year. You can tell when you look at her physique. And I asked yeah. her about gaining weight. And she said, I'm up about eight pounds or whatever it was. And then she pointed to her left bicep. She said, two pounds here. Pointed to her right <laughs> bicep, two, two pounds here. But she was serious. Yeah. Their, their training staff had a way to measure that. And she knew exactly how much muscle she had gained in her body. So just take a look at, you know, it's one of the reasons she can finish and perform the way she does. Is she's stronger than most players her size. She's always been very lean. She's added muscle to her physique over the last three months. Ooh, hit the deck there. Ogumawale was calling for the ball because Dangerfield hit the floor. See Marina Mabry kind of yelling, even without the ball, trying to direct the offense. Well, she wants to get them moving. I mean, it's too much standing yeah. around. That's something that Muffin McGraw talked about today. When Notre Dame's been at its best in these first seven games, a lot less ISO and a lot more team ball. We haven't seen that in some of these key stretches here in the second half. When they've been at their best, they've gotten out in transition. Yeah. Connecticut was able to limit that pretty effectively, too. Mabry. A foul called against Notre Dame. Shepard was battling for it. And you see Muffet asking, hey, who is that foul on? 
It's the fourth on Shepard. Is it the right elbow that one? Perhaps. Before she got the rebound? Huh. Perhaps on a clear on? It's her fourth either way. And she and Mabry at four. And Kristen Williams adding to her career day at the free throw strike. What a, what a performance from Williams. So often, these UConn-Notre Dame games over the years have been defined by who has the best guard on the floor, right? And whoever has the best guard on the floor and that player asserts themselves, they win the game. Yeah. Well, UConn has had the best guard on the floor. It's been a freshman yeah. that has outplayed everyone else. And, and I don't know how many times, and, and we could go back and people probably hit us on Twitter and tell us which, but I, I don't remember a freshman guard being the best player on the floor in a game as big as this, in the in, in the history of this rivalry, and, I, and I'm trying to go through some of the, some of the teams, but you know, of course, you remember Diana Taurasi being the best guard on the floor. Sure. You remember Skylar Diggins being the best guard on the floor. You remember Maya Moore being the best guard on the floor. Renee Montgomery, but I, I don't remember a freshman being the best guard on the floor, and, and I on the road at that. I mean, it's really an incredible performance by Kristen Williams. UConn ball. Big day here, obviously, in South Bend. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish football team makes the playoff. We'll talk about that on SportsCenter coming up with John Anderson and Kenny Maine. They'll have post-game reaction tonight after the Sunday night Chargers-Steelers game. The Chiefs playing without Kareem Hunt this week after he was released. All of that gets broken down on SportsCenter tonight at 11. Collier, offensive rebound and the putback. Maybe do you throw Brianna Stewart in there? I only bring up that name because Williams is the first guard to start as a freshman in her first game since Brianna Stewart, and she's had that type of impact on this game for UConn. Another foul against Notre Dame. And but even Brianna Stewart, Rebecca, remember how long it took her to become a force her first year, the whole regular season. Right, right. I mean, it wasn't until the NCAA tournament and then ultimately the Final Four, sure. she had that huge coming out party. But it, w it wasn't from day one. And it feels different with Williams here. Well, guys, this is the Jimmy V showcase between Notre Dame and UConn, and we'd really love for everyone to donate to Jimmy V. You can join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer. And if I could just add a personal note, uh, the V Foundation has actually funded my personal doctor, um, his research and research that is helping to cure people, cure people with cancer and all kinds of new immunotherapy trials. And so so I, I just think it is the most personal thing. And if I could ask you, any money you're going to waste on, like, pizza or that pair of <laughs> shoes you don't need or just a dump shopping trip, um, it can really help save lives. I know mine is one of those lives that's being saved with this research and these donations. So thank you very much, and I hope you will consider donating to the V Foundation. Holly, I know we've got stuff to handle here, but let me commend you and your crew yesterday, by the way. Holly did a fantastic job on ABC with the Big 12 championship game. Your crew gave you a shout-out after you gave a Great story about the late Turner Cockrell, the young player at Vanderbilt, the football player who had passed away after his battle with cancer this week. You spoke very freely about it. I just wanted to commend you. I know Kara, Rebecca, and our entire crew feel the same way about that. And again, we're proud and pleased and privileged to have Holly on our crew and anything you can do to help. We certainly encourage that. So unsportsmanlike foul. Is that by Enrique Agumawale. Kind of and grabbing a danger field there. Yeah, so two free throws and then point of interruption which should be UConn's ball. Officials, you know, whenever these teams play, you know, things can get heated and a little bit physical trying to avoid a Donnybrook. Well done in your use of Donnybrook. It's not used nearly enough in basketball. Samuelson. She and Maya Moore still tied on that three-point chart. Everybody's chasing Kalina Mosqueda-Lewis. Uh, the incredible three-point run in her career, especially in the NCAA tournament with some of the games she had. Dangerfield, traveling violation. Irish will get Toledo on the road on Saturday. For UConn, this begins their 
very difficult road stretch. This is their first true road game of the year. Six of their next seven, counting today, on the road, including going on the road at Cal. They'll take on a f top 15 team in Cal. They've got Baylor in Waco in that stretch right before they begin conference play. Right now, Katie Lou Samuelson, who's had a great second half, needs some help up. Remember, she took an elbow to the chops earlier today. Now stepping in, trying to take the charge against Jackie Young. That hurts when your arms are straight up like that. Your chest, your ribs, everything completely yep. exposed to contact. This is going to be a learning experience for Notre Dame. I want to commend UConn for the effort that they, they put out this afternoon on the road. And, you know, Notre Dame, I thought, became too predictable. I, late second half, especially in the half court. Right. I thought their motions got the best of themselves a little bit. And they couldn't stop Connecticut defensively. There, there wasn't a point where when they needed to stop, they needed to get one, they needed to lock in, that they were able to, to get enough of those. And so this is gonna, going to be, we know the resiliency that lies within the Notre Dame locker room. That's not, that's yeah. not with it, that's not, a question. not questioning we're, we don't that. Question yeah. That, yeah. McGraw said, coming into this game, the one area where UConn is much better than us is on the defensive end. Yep, and they proved that in the second half. There's Dangerfield. It'll be Notre Dame ball. Got a final reminder. Kind of all these Notre Dame promos. A lot going on. The men's team <laughs> taking on Oklahoma for the first time on Tuesday night at Madison Square Garden, Florida and West Virginia to follow in a great matchup. That's on ESPN and the ESPN app Tuesday night. Nelson Adota clears it. Kristen Williams with 28 in her first true road game as a college basketball player. Collier had 16 and 15. Samuelson with a big second half. And in a one versus two matchup, which is a pretty nice barometer for both of these teams in early December, the UConn Huskies come to South Bend, pick up their 122nd straight regular season win and their fifth win over Notre Dame in that one versus two matchup. UConn stays unbeaten. They'll be your new number one in the polls this week. Notre Dame suffers its first loss of the season. Their third home loss in their last 101 games, all three of them in the even-numbered Decembers over the last three years. Let's go over to Holly Rowe. So, Kristen Williams, this is your first big college road game in your life. And very first or second possession of the game, you take it into the basket hard. Why were you so unfazed by this atmosphere today? Well, my teammates and my coaching staff have amazing confidence in me, and that really encouraged me to do what I do. So, um, yeah, I was just really excited to be here today. Do you know how many points you scored today? I have no idea. Okay, well, it was a new career high, 28. Oh, wow. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty good. What does it mean to you to be so confident and feel so comfortable against a really good team like Notre Dame in, early in your career? Um, yeah, uh, I've dreamed of playing in this game. Um, so to finally be here is truly a blessing. Um, we worked really hard and since summer, and so we came out here and executed really well. I know you were a freshman. You were watching this game on TV last time they played in the Final Four. What does it mean to now be on the court participating in this rivalry? Again, I'm happy to be here, and I'm just happy to help my teammates. I wanted to win for the teammates of last year, so it was just means a lot to me to be able to win this game for them. All right, where do you get that aggressive nature? That competitive beast is in there. I see it. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's just there. I don't know where I get it from. <laughs> I'm just really competitive. All right, yeah. we saw that today. 28 points, new career high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great stuff, Holly, and you see that personality. You see where it comes from. It's not fake, it's not pretend. Gino Ariema said she led the way with 28 points in a UConn win over Notre Dame. For Rebecca, Kara, Holly, our great crew, pleased to be back with you. Adam Amin saying so long from South Bend. Let's take you to Sports Center.